Um, basically, obviously, we know I'm going to touch on the fact of working out. It's obvious that I work out. Um, I made a life out of training. I made a life out of health and fitness. I made a life out of uh, teaching people how to eat better. You know what I'm saying? So these are all things that obviously are going to go hand in hand with any kind of success that you guys expect. What, what's your name, Kay? Lakel? Lakel. and Jason. Have a seat. Um, these are things that, that, that are going to obviously go hand in hand with any kind of success you guys expect to um, have in life and grow from that point. You know what I'm saying? So I like to start with the inside out. Obviously, we got to eat better. Obviously, we got to train, but we're going to get to that point. I'm going to let you guys know who I am because before you even listen to somebody, they got to prove themselves to you as far as what they did, did what they've accomplished, what they have been through. All right? Um, Jason Dobson, I'm the director of Island Gym. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Island Gym. That's the biggest chain of gyms out here in South Jersey. Um, we have the biggest training program. There was no training program. There was no members. There were no clients. There, were no, there was nothing until I came there. Um, I'm a dude from the Bronx, from New York. I'm 30 years old. I was... I was in positions that made you guys look like you were in the perfect position in life right now. I've been through the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. Um, didn't like school, you see what I'm saying? But um, at some point, I had to wake up. At some point, I had to realize what was really important. In my case, the day that I woke up was when I had my daughter. You know, I got two daughters, and I have a 13-year-old and an 8-year-old. The first daughter that I had when I was 17 years old, that was my kind of start of waking up point. So, um... My mission in life is pretty much to talk to anyone that I can see that may be in that position, may be in a worse off position, or even in a better position. Because when I was in that position, I didn't have anybody else to talk to me. You see what I'm saying? I had people that tried to talk to me, but I couldn't see eye to eye with them. They were from a whole nother world. You know what I'm saying? They would come around me in a suit. They would come around me with a tie. They would come around me with a whole bunch of college degrees trying to see eye to eye with me. And you can't see eye to eye because you have no idea what I'm going through. You have no idea what I'm struggling. I got to go home to my family that same night that was struggling, five or six of us in a studio in the Bronx. You see what I'm saying? So it was hard for me to see eye to eye with individuals like that, which now I respect that they even took the time out to try because I now realize that nobody has to do nothing for you. Nobody has to talk to you. No one has to take time out of their days to talk to you. But when I was younger, I found it harder for me to see eye to eye with those people. So now that I'm a brother that has been through that, I've been on that side, and now I'm on the other side also, I felt it's my mission, maybe I can reach out to people and help them avoid all of the, the trial and errors that I had to go through to get here. Because had I had one person like me when I was 17 years old, the next five, six, seven years of fucking up wouldn't happen. Because at 17, I would have met that right dude, he would have put me in the right place, put my mind in the right set, and I wouldn't have to waste three, four years, six years, Seven years of being shot, being stabbed, fighting, trying to play the tough guy, um, not knowing if I was a, not knowing if I wanted to be a ladies' man and have 20 females, or if I should be a one-woman man and be a husband and a father to my daughters. You know what I'm saying? So that that would have saved me from all the years being wasted. How old are you guys? What 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 age range are you guys? 21. So everybody's about 20, 21 years old. So you guys, 18. So you're a baby in the room. But at the end of the day, you guys are all adults. So it's not even no 18. You guys are legal adults. You guys can all walk into a liquor store and buy liquor right now. So something as simple as that takes a lot of response. No, what? Uh, are you 21? Well, close enough. Um, but that's, you're not even close. I ain't want you with cigarettes. So you're not even cigarettes. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, you guys now have adult responsibilities. So everything that you do, you're going to be looked upon as an adult. You know what I'm saying? The years of, he might be able to get away with something and say, oh, you know, he's still young. At 21, ain't no young, there's no more excuses. You know what I'm saying? You're a grown adult. And there's other grown adults that if you're not moving a certain way, they're not gonna give you the time of day. You see what I'm saying? So ultimately, that's my goal, to uh, pretty much just get into you guys' heads and to help you guys understand that I'm somebody just like you that was way, 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 way in a worse position, like I said, that makes this spot right here look like heaven. And if I can move to where I'm at right now, you guys can move there. My next topic is basically, you could preach all day, and yeah, Jay, it sounds good, but how did you do certain things? You know what I'm saying? You can tell me what the, what the, what the golden ticket looks like, but how the hell do I get the golden ticket? You saw? So that's ultimately my goal. Um, did I introduce my partner today? Yeah, I did. Um, basically, I got a quote that I like to run with, and this is pretty, pretty much, if I can tattoo this on my forehead, I will tattoo it on my forehead. It's on um, the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. That quote was by Oprah Winfrey. All right? The greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change their future by changing their attitude. So they didn't say go to school. They didn't say, they didn't say um, treat this one with that. They, just, they said just changing your attitude. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying anybody here has an attitude as far as being mean or being an asshole. Attitude meaning just the way you move, your, your way of thinking, you know what I'm saying? Your positivity. And it also means if you got an attitude, you know what I'm saying? The way you can change your future today, the day, and this ain't me just thinking or quoting Oprah Winfrey. The reason why I was able to associate myself with that was because that was what changed me. The day that I changed my attitude, must like my overall look on life, my future changed. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The day I saw things from a different perspective, the day I started thinking positive, positive the day I stopped um, looking at the negative, the day I stopped feeling bad for myself, the day I started feeling like I had bad luck, you know what I'm saying, the day I stopped feeling like things were unfair, the day I stopped having a grudge against the world, the day I started being good to other people, the day I started being good to other people is funny, you know what I'm saying? But the day you actually give, they say you got to give to get, that's the truest saying in the world. You have to give to get. The day I change my attitude is the day my future changed. And that's the day, and you could, I'm not sure, I'm not going to go into a whole spiel on God and religion because everybody's to each his own, but I am a believer in a higher power. And I do believe that, that good brings good. There's something watching over it. So there's a reason why we're all here, but that's on you guys to believe what you want. But at the end of the day, always have that mindset that there is a reason why you're here. And if you bring that negativity or you do negativity, you will get negativity. So the day you change your attitude, the day you guys start moving in a come, not for now, not because somebody else is watching, not because it's a good thing to do to go and post on the, post on the internet and say, hey, I did good today, look at me. Nah, the day you in your heart decide that you're a good person, I'm going to be good, like I'm a good. And this is coming from Jason Dobson, who for, for a long time, I thought I was, the, I was, I was a New York gangster. Couldn't tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? All I cared about was getting the nicest car in New York. All I cared was about having the nicest girl next to me. You see what I'm saying? All I cared about was my next dollar. And I was never an a, a, a evil person, because in my mind, you know, I smoked a little trees. I'm not hurt nobody. My boy wants a nickel bag of weed. He's going to have a nickel bag of weed. I ain't hurt nobody. Guess what? That wasn't good. That wasn't good. Because something as simple as smoking weed and me thinking it's not hurting nobody, the day I changed my attitude, the day I stopped touching any kind of cigarettes or marijuana, that was the day that I realized how bad all that shit was. Because when you're under the influence, you don't realize it. Everything seems fine. I can function. I'm good. I can drive. I can talk. I can walk. I can eat. Shit, I'm eating more than normal. I'm good. I was working out. It was the day that you stopped touching things that shouldn't be in your body that you say, damn, life just got a lot clearer. You see what I'm saying? And then that's when you start realizing how far you can propel yourself. Then you start realizing, damn, I could achieve a lot more than what I have achieved. At that point, you're like, shit, why didn't I stop a while ago? Where would I be right now? You see what I'm saying? And that's my goal with you guys. Because I'm 30 years old. If you guys, any negativity that is involved in your lives right now, you guys, if you guys were to stop now, right now, when you're my age at 30 years old, you make me look like nobody. Because you, you have a 10, 11, 12 year head start of doing good of clearing your body of toxins, of thinking level-headed, of thinking clear, you know what I'm saying? Of thinking of the future, but at the same time thinking of right now. So um, basically my, 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 strongest, my strongest point is to always make sure first and foremost attitude has changed. Um, second, most importantly, like I said, is always I wanna, be, I wanna be talked to by somebody that I can obviously associate myself with. Um, who likes school? Who likes school? Love that. Good answer. Well, what, 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 so what about you? Why don't you like school? <laughs> oh, you didn't raise that? I didn't see that. <laughs> who don't like school? Keep it on it. I see half the room go. Who don't like school? I like learning about stuff like educating like myself. Like I hate school. I, like. I hate school. School's not for everybody. I like school myself. I school. High school, I didn't like school. I like, like school like myself. School, yeah. yeah. Why do you like school? Because now you can choose what, because in, in high school, in elementary, in, pub, in uh, junior high school, you were forced to learn things. Mm -hmm. And you did what I did. You're like, well, how the hell is me knowing who the hell built that bridge <laughs> back then going to help me make money in life? You see what I'm saying? Back then it was just, I understand the concept behind it now, just getting your mind to expand, getting your mind to think. But that was the same way. I didn't like school because I'm like, I don't see how this is going to help me. Now, as you get older, you realize you hit the nail right on the head. Now you can choose what you learn in school. I still didn't like school. I didn't like downtime. I saw this downtime. 
I saw this. Then I'm sitting here listening to somebody talking to me again. Somebody that I can't associate myself with. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is about 75 years old from a whole other part of the, the city. And he has no idea what I got to go through when I leave the school. So it was kind of hard to associate or especially if he even tried to act like he was like me. would piss me off even more. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I realized how necessary school was. Because you got to know something. You got to know something, and like you said, now that you can choose what you can know, you can now choose to learn something that you like. Right. You see what I'm saying? So the hardest thing for most people is to choose what they like. So what do I like to do? What would I do to get up in the morning and go to work, and it's not really work? Because the day you get up and you like what you're doing, you're not going to work. You go to dinner at nighttime, is that going to work? Nah. You go to the movies, is that going to work? Nah. The day you get up you get presents for Christmas and you open a card and there's money in there, did you just go to work to get that money? You didn't go to work to get that money because you like what's happening right now. The day you have something that you like what you're doing when you get up in the morning, that's not a job. So the day that you guys can identify, the day you guys can figure out what you like, and you're going to like something completely different than what I like. You can like something different than what I like. I can like something different than what you like. The day you figure out what you like and what works for you, and what doesn't take too much power, what comes easy, what comes effortlessly, that's your passion, there's a way to make money from it. It's for you to figure out how to make the money legally from that passion, from that like. And you ain't never gonna work a day in your life, okay? And that is the reason behind school. Now you gotta look at trades, obviously. I'm sure your counselors here hit you guys with trades all day long of ideas. My partner here, HVAC, um, there's, a, there's a company out here called One Hour Heating and AC. Basically, a brother like himself, he, he, he didn't see himself as no guy pushing paper all day long. He didn't see himself as a, 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 um, a politician. He saw something that he liked, something that was easy for him to learn, first and foremost. Something that he wouldn't mind getting up in the morning doing. And something that paid good. Because all that could be good, but if it's not enough money to survive off of, guess what? You're going to be stressed out. Because it's not going to be a job. Because when you leave that passion or that thing that you love, you've go, you, you got to go do something else to go make sure the rest of your bills are paid. So obviously you want to take into account that it's something that pays decent. You see what I'm saying? So ultimately that is you guys' goal right now. Your goals are to figure out something. Don't waste too much time because you guys are 20 years old, 21 years old, 18 years old. I never realized how fast. It felt like I took forever to get to 18 years old. I couldn't wait to get to 18 years old. When you get to 18, 19, 20, you're going to be 30 like this because guess what? You're not counting the days no more. Now you're like, shit, slow down, time. It ain't slowing down no more. It's not slowing down. That's when it breezes by. Before you know it, you're 30 years old, talking about, damn, what do I like to do? What can I do now? You see what I'm saying? And now you got a lot of things against you. Because now you're thinking twice of going to school, because you're going to be around the 18, 20 year olds who got their mind right from early. You see what I'm saying? Say, I don't want to be around the kids. I'm going to look funny around them kids. You know what I'm saying? Do it from now. You guys are in a position where I pray to God. I could only wish I had the opportunity to be where you guys are right now and have someone in front of me explain to me how important finding my dream is, how important going to school is, how important taking care of myself is. You see what I'm saying? And how doable it is. Because I knew all of this. I didn't, I didn't doubt somebody. I just didn't think it was doable. I just didn't think I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I just felt it wasn't for me. So ultimately, that, yeah, hop in. Hi. Um, my name is David from Miles. I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of background on my life as far as, believe it or not, I'm actually the oldest, I'm 36 years old, and um, I'm a father of three, I got an oldest daughter, she'll be 17 next month, my other daughter's 13, and my son right here is 10. For me, I grew up in the Bronx as well, I decided to go to a trade high school. That pretty much was my foundation as far as figuring out that I wanted to work with my hands. By doing that, I ended up um, going to school for heating and air. When I graduated, I ended up doing heating and plumbing. My career path from that point was I just focused on working with my hands, but it opened up doors for me where I was able to um, move into a supervisor's role. From there, I was able to move into management. Um, like Jason was saying, I own a company out here now, which is it's called One Hour Heating and Air. And we're a very successful company. Um, I have about, little, about 15 employees right now. And I've been in that business since 96. So when it comes to the trade or schooling, for me, the same thing with Jason. I wasn't fond of school. I wasn't really interested in far as the college aspect. I did go to college for a little bit. I realized it was too tough for me, so you know I said, "What can I do? What's, what's my skill level? What can I work with?" 
and my hands was the push still. Now, as far as my lifestyle growing up, I'm the oldest of five, well, I'm five boys. My brother's right behind you, one of them. Um, he's the second oldest to me. And so, um, you know, we all grew up in the same household. But, you know, growing up as kids, you know, you kind of don't really know what you want to do in life. You don't really show how things are going to turn out. But you just keep focusing on, you know, what your passion is and what you want to get out of life. As far as the thing that changed me, the same thing with Jason, I have a daughter, my older daughter. You know, I was 19 years old, I have my older daughter. That was something that, at first, I was like, what am I going to do? I thought my life was over. But in a sense, it actually helped me grow up a lot faster and even realize I had responsibility. It wasn't about me no more, it was about my kid. And so, um, fortunate enough for me, I just continued to focus and grind. And, you know, I ended up here. I've been in Jersey now since 2009. But um, I took a lot of risks. You know, I left New York, went to Florida for about 10 years. Um, then from there, I came up here to Jersey. And in life, what I've learned is that if you want something out of life, you have to be willing to take the risk. Because nothing's handed to you. And when you want to get something out of life, you got to be willing to take that risk and have the desire to do that. You know, when I'm doing interviews now, and I'm interviewing uh, potential employees, you know, things that I look at is when they come to the interview, are they prepared for that interview? Meaning, example, if they come in and they come to fill an application out, do they have a pen? You know, I can't tell you any times that, you know, and I'm dressed right now, dressed down. When I'm in my business aspect, I'm a totally different person, personality, I look different. But when you go to interview, make sure you have a pen. Okay? If you fill an application out and you have your phone number left on the application or your email, make sure your email is not hotdaddy.com or some <laughs> crazy nonsense. Like, you know, use your name. You know, use your first and last name at gmail.com. If you want to be treated and respected as a professional, have a professional email. Make sure your voicemail ain't having like, you know, some ringtone way in back. Okay? And then make sure your voicemail don't sound like a kid. And then more importantly, I can't tell you how frustrating it is for me to call somebody that apply for a job, I get a voicemail. If you apply for a job, you better have this phone next to you. That's your cell phone number. Make sure you answer that phone because you don't know you get that call. And that call could be the call that could change your life as far as being an opportunity for a job that you may not get the call. Because guess what? I don't need a voicemail. When I, when, I put an, when I put an ad out there for any position, hundreds, there's hundreds of people looking for jobs. So what's going to what's gonna separate you on a piece of paper when I call you? What's going to make you stand out? So once from that point, the little thing I can tell you, the more important thing, like I said, is your cell phone, your email. You know, I look at the job references and look at, you know, how they've been a job. Um, I don't get too deep in depth as far as, you know, coin references. Um, I learned this day and age that people will not stay at a job because they're not happy. And there's reason why some people move around. The old, the old ways was like they want to look at a long-term job status for a long time. But for me, you know, my way of career-wise, I went from one company to another company to continue to build myself. But what I can tell you, the frustration from my aspect for me when I see somebody, and then don't come late to the interview, okay? Um, if you got to be there at 10 o'clock, the rule of thumb is show up 15 minutes early. Show it 15 minutes early. Don't come at 10 o'clock and you're supposed to be there at 10. And then you come in late, forget about it. Like, I have not interviewed people. If they came in five minutes late, I'm not interviewing them. Because if you can't come on time to an interview, what makes me think that you're going to come on time to work? If you can't come with a pen to, an to uh, fill an application out, what makes me think, uh, think that you'll be prepared for a job? Now, I'm not telling you to come in an interview and be dressed in a suit and shirt and tie down. Um, one of the funny stories to me, one of my um, one of my job experiences, I did that one time for a job, and it was so ironic how this happened. I went all dressed up for the job, I didn't get hired. Long story short, about a year later, I worked for another company in the same marketplace. The owners were friends. So the guy that didn't hire me saw me grow up for the company and end up becoming management. And I, I kind of laughed at him, I was like, you know, you didn't hire me because I was overdressed in a sense. And that's because the contracting world is a little different. So I was business casual when I, you know, when I ended up getting hired my next job. So how do you make yourself valuable? You know, it's a quick question. How do you become more valuable and become more asset to, you know, you know, for yourself to grow within the company? And those things we look at is, you know, it's like don't be something that you're not. We're all unique and all individuals in ourselves. We all all our lives, you know, saying we all have our mistakes, and we build from that. 
when you build from that, that's how you learn how to grow and not do the same things you did over and over again. You know, our mission, you know, when you're my partner here, is to be able to give you the feedback, the things that we went through, you know, stay free made. And hopefully, you know what, if one, two, three of y'all need a change, hey, I would never know that, but at the end of the day, I know I feel good about this here, being here tonight, me and Believe here, you know that, you know what, I was able to spread my knowledge with you guys and realize that, you know what, you can make it. And what you have to have is desire. Desire is a key thing. I'll pass it back to Jason because he likes to talk a lot. So. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, he touched some very uh, strong points. And the strongest point that he touched was the point that I was about to touch, which is um, looking the part. I don't care how long you went to school. I don't care what you know. I don't care how much God gave you the gift of gab. If you don't look the part, you're not going to get the part. Okay? Um, there's, a, there's a nice talent that some people have, that I have. And we all have it, but you got to know how to use it. It's being who you are at the right place at the right time. So you see me right now. You look at me like, yo, this guy's all my jobs and, you know, walking into a company. Like, how is how, Jason covered in tattoos and neck tatted up? And how does this guy get jobs? Like, how, how does he run a multi-million dollar company, a couple multi-million dollar companies right now? Don't take my words as, oh, that means I can go to the tattoo shop tonight and get laced up <laughs> and think life is going to be great because that could be one of the worst things you can do to yourself until you're established. When you're established, guess what? You can do what the hell you want to do. That's the beauty about being established. I can tap my face tomorrow. When my businesses are set up and they're the way they're supposed to be, I'm good. Would I do that? Not at all because I still plan to progress in life. And I still know there will be board meetings that I'll be at it one day that if a shirt can't cover these tattoos, I'm going to be in trouble. You see what I'm saying? Because at some point, I'm going to have to sell myself to somebody again. For you to be anywhere in life, you're going to have to sell yourself. Just like a car. You go to a car lot, you see a car, that car has to sell you. It has to be the color. It has to be the type you want. It has to have the right size engine. It's got to have leather on the inside. It's got to have tins. It's got to have rims. Whatever it is, it's got to sell itself to you. So you guys have to be able to sell yourselves. Problem is, it's not one size fits all. So you can go into a, a job interview tomorrow and be in front of him, and shit, if I walked in, I'd be like, oh shit, that's the boss, I'm good, I'm gonna sit down, what's bothering me, how you doing? I'm Jason. However, I got a little bit of respect, but I can see that this guy's kinda cool, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna still sell myself to him because I have to now show him my value. I might walk into a job interview with a whole other individual. I gotta be able to sell myself to that individual also, okay? So there's a, there's a very strong talent of basically not being fake. Don't ever be fake, but being able to be a chameleon and blend into any environment, okay? With that being said, I can have tattoos, I can have piercings, but earrings can come out. Shirts can go on. This brother right here got it. He's got it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into uh, uh, to, uh, into into uh, civil court or even traffic court for a, 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 a BS speeding ticket, but there's a guy there for a DUI. So his case, he got a, a kind of a serious case, and I, I got my shirt, my button up down. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm trying to get this damn speeding ticket talked down. My heart's racing a little bit. I'm like, oh shit, this damn speeding ticket. This guy got a DUI where he hit a little girl, and he got a hoodie on. Walks into court with a hoodie and some sweats on. He's done. He's done. <laughs> I don't care who he is, I don't care how smart he is, I don't care how much money he got, I don't care what his lawyer knows. If you don't have enough heart to get yourself right, to sell yourself to that judge, to sell yourself to that, that potential employer, to sell yourself to that person that you're basically asking, begging with the most pride and respect for yourself possible, please give me an, op op an opportunity. Please give me the ability to help your, your company prosper. If you can't just put on a nice outfit, a pair of pants, some people got it twisted. Some guys think because they have one of pants and shirt that they're doing it. If the pants don't fit you, you're not doing it still. Make sure your clothes fit, you know what I'm saying? Make sure the shirt fits, make sure, like I said, this dude right, the shoes, you can have shoes on all day. If the shoes ain't clean, if the shoes aren't shining, you're not saying nothing. You're not saying nothing. He walked into my gym right now and said, listen, man, Jason, I, I've never trained before in my life. Never. However, I've heard about what you got going on. I, I respect it to the max. And, brother, all I want is an opportunity. I swear on my kids right now, I don't know this man from nowhere. 
I'm giving him an opportunity. I'm going to look at him first and foremost, but listen, first of all, I'm going to have to train you. You know what I'm saying? All of you, if we were to be trained, we'd go on diets, we'd start working out, I would mold you to be that person that I need, but I would give you an opportunity. Why would I give him the opportunity? Because he dressed properly. Looks the part. He cares. He cares. He thought before he came in front of me about what I would think. He cared about my thoughts. He cared about my judgment. He had enough, he had enough concern and foresight to say, listen, I'm about to go see somebody in a position that I'm going to be looking for a position with. So let me look the part. If he can take care of himself like that, not saying that we can't all clean up like that. He got me feeling like I'm real dressed down right now, which is good. If he can take care of himself like that, chances are he will try his best to take care of my business like that. So this is, this is number one. That's number one. He did touch on the, the fact of the contracting world where he was overdressed and I hear what he just said. I love my boy to death. Take that risk and be overdressed. Don't ever sit there and categorize jobs. Well, this is not a white collar job, so I, I might wear the hood, I might wear the cut, the turtle. Nah. When in doubt, act like you're going to a gala. Boom. Soup. How you doing, sir? I'm so and so. How you doing? I'm Jason. Nice to meet you. So I just did to this guy's hand right here. You shake a man's hand. You shake a woman's hand. Endearment. You could, you grab their hand. These are little things in life that you do that make you stand out from the rest of the people. You don't walk into a job interview and hey, what's going on? I'm doing. Don't ever grab no man's hand by the tip. This is some girl shit. Don't grab my hands like that. You see what I'm saying? You grab a man's hand. Boom. And don't be that extra aggressive guy either. And like you want to break my hand either. Like dude, <laughs> calm down. You see what I'm saying? How you doing, Jason? Nice to meet you. You see that right there? I just got that job. That job is mine. Take, I'm telling you, I wish I had someone to teach me these things when I was 19 and 20 years old. I learned them through the years. You just showed that man that's the ultimate sign of respect within the first 30 seconds of meeting somebody. When you grab their hand and you lock their hand in like that. Don't make it awkward either now. Okay, let the man's <laughs> hand go real quick, all right? But look the part, show respect, you know what I'm saying, and sit down. Answer, answering these questions. They're going to ask you questions. A lot of these questions are trick questions. A lot of these questions, they know what you're going to say. You see what I'm saying? But it's not the answer. It's the confidence in the answer. They know what you're going to say. Um, are you going to smoke weed while working my machinery? They know you're going to say no. But if you say, if you say no and look around or you look like, oh, shit, how do you know I smoke weed? You see what I'm saying? You're done. Sir, no way, no way. Listen, I understand a lot of this equipment costs over fifty, sixty thousand dollars. First of all, I don't mess with any drugs at all. But my goal right now is to take your business to a whole nother level. I would never do anything to jeopardize your business. You see what I'm saying? And you're done talking. Stay, get your get your get your point across and stop talking. Go into interviews with confidence. Go into interviews with I got this job. Confidence, but not cockiness. There's a fine line between being confident and being cocky. Very fine line. Very fine line. Okay? <laughs> and he can he can it look is. he can look the part. He can look the way he looks right now. He walked into my office and he grabbed the chair and he sits down in front of me like this. Like some people do too much. Like like and I'm kinda of a little bit lax in my office and he starts running through his well I've trained at Gold's Gym in uh, New York City and uh, yeah, I trained the best of the best of the Bro, calm down. You know what I'm saying? Get your point across. Let me know who you are, but breathe. You see what I'm saying? Fine line between cockiness and confidence. Be confident, but still let that person know in front of you, listen, right now you're the teacher and I'm the student. And I'm here to, I, I want to hear what you have to tell me. Because there's always something somebody can teach you. Always something. I don't care if the kid is 13 years old. I got kids that I train that are six years old. And there's days that I walk to my office and say, what the hell just happened? Like that kid just touched my heart. Oh, Jay, Mr. Jason, did you know that, 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 what? I didn't know that. You see what I'm saying? Just always never underestimate anybody, never belittle anybody, never overestimate anybody. Let people prove themselves to you, okay? Keep in mind, there's always something someone can teach you. Um, bigger than all of that, health and fitness. You know, I got to get to this part. This is what I do for a living, okay? Island Gym. Who, have, you, have you heard of Island Gym? Anybody heard of Island Gym? I went past it. Biggest chain of gyms out here in South Jersey. Biggest chain of gyms. Island Gym and Fitness, okay? Um, I came down to Jersey from New York three, almost four years ago. They had no training program. I, I trained. I was a boxer. I boxed for 13 years. I had no choice in New York. A little light-skinned dude running around the Bronx. I'm Jamaican. 
which was think of something that you like. And I said, what would I not mind doing? I thought about it all. I thought about real estate. I thought about quick things. That I can go get certified real quick, but will do what? Make me enough money to survive. There's a lot of things that you can do. You can say, hey, I like to draw pictures. I'm going to be an artist. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be an artist. There's a good chance you can be a broke artist. You see what I'm saying? You can say, listen, I like to rap. Shit, there ain't nothing wrong with rapping, but that's going to be a plan B, C, D, E, or F. You need a plan A first. Let, that will be your fallback plan. You see what I'm saying? Like if you like drawing, like try like a tattoo shop. There you go. These are things. There you go. You can try a tattoo shop. These are things that you can that you can do that work with your passion with what you like. But always make sure there's a plan B, plan C, and a plan D. If you run with a plan A that you like drawing and you're looking for a tattoo shop, and plan A is your only plan, there's a good chance that plan A is not gonna work. Life is so ironic. The minute you have more than one plan, guess what happens? First one works. That's how it is. You got all these other plans lined up. I'm ready to go. And it, everything works out. The minute you're you're depending on that that two hundred dollars that your friend owes you because your rent ain't your rent is due tomorrow, your friend ain't calling you that two hundred dollars. The minute you got a couple dollars in the bank, everything happens perfectly fine. Make sure you have your plan A, B, C, and D. Plan A should be almost a hundred percent guarantee if you execute it properly. And God forbid it doesn't work out for whatever reason. You wake up the next morning and say, okay, wasn't meant to be. So be it. On to plan B. The minute you move like that, you will live the, le the least stress-free life. You will not have no high blood pressure. You're not going to age fast. You're going to stay young forever. You're going to stay with a smile on your face. Which, again, goes back to the first point I made tonight. Keeps you with a good attitude. Because a person who's stressed out, a person whose bills aren't paid, a person whose plan A is their only plan and it's not working, how do you think they walk around in life? Pissed off. Miserable. Stressed out. When you're pissed off, when you're miserable, when you're stressed out, what type of people, what type of things do you think it brings around you? Negativity. Same people. Don't be in a car with your boys, a bunch of pissed off, miserable, stressed out ass people <laughs> that are now desperate trying to figure out how to go get some money real quick. Which is going to bring more negativity. Versus being a positive dude, drawing other positive people towards you. Once you're surrounded by positive people that move and think and act like you, that all have plan A, B, C's, and D's, you can never fall. You can never fall in life because he is your crutch. She is your crutch. I fall back, I got 20 people to catch. Yo, Jay, you good? What's wrong? You all right? Need some money? Your bills got caught up? You got people that are like-minded that are established around you like-minded, positive people, you will never fall. Keep positive, keep like-minded, keep those same type of people around you. In a nutshell, anybody negative, anybody you know that ain't about being positive in life, anybody that you can tell in their eyes that they're just evil, you ever meet a person that you can just tell is evil? Like, there's nothing you can do to that person. Like, they're just, they're just, that's a bad person. You know what I'm saying? You can identify that. Cut that person out your life. I don't care how cool they are with you. I don't care how nice they are. I don't care. Cut them out your life. Because it is what it is. They're going to bring negativity around you. Not Probably not directly, but indirectly you're going to get hurt at the end of the day. And that's why I left New York City. Because a lot of the cats that I grew up with, they, a lot of them had good intentions. A lot of them were bad. You see what I'm saying? And I was just going to get caught up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Cops come through. They sweep this kid. I'm next to him. I'm going to jail too. This kid got beef with somebody. If they come through shooting the block, guess who's getting shot along with him? I'm getting shot too. You know what I'm saying? The, the, we're all sleeping with the same people. She catch HIV. He catch HIV. Guess who else getting HIV? We all doing this together. Move yourself out of certain circles. Move yourself out of certain scenes. Because if, you, if you're smart enough to, to identify negativity, wrong, evilness in somebody else, if you don't move yourself from it, you're, you're, it's a, you're a part of it, too. You're a part of it, too. All right? That's how far we're going to go with just taking care of yourselves and moving forward as far as mental, professional. Now we're talking health and fitness. The key to making all this happen, the key to implementing this for as long as possible is going to be your health and fitness. Okay? Obesity, being overweight, not eating right is the number one killer in this world. <laughs> the number one killer in this world. So you can go to school, you can get whatever trade you want, you can have plan A, B, C, D, E, and F, but guess what? If you're 90 pounds overweight, what does that mean? Because you'd be dead by 35 years old. You'd be dead by 40 years old. 
You know what I'm saying? It's important. You've got to take care of yourselves. You guys got to be in the gym. You guys got to eat better, okay? Whatever you put into your body is what's going to come out of your body. Greasy food, eating on the run, preparation. You guys want to eat your high-protein foods, your chickens, your turkeys, your salmon, your tuna, your tilapia. Mixed veggies. Keep the cake down. You over there laughing. What you over there laughing for? Right? Exactly. Man, I'm about to get up and leave this conversation right now. This conversation has made a crazy right turn. But guess what? Yeah. But guess what, guys? It's, it's your body's your temple. So you guys implementing all the good that we just gave you, all the knowledge that we just get, gave you, all the wisdom we just kicked to you, if your temple's falling apart, what does that mean? You're going to fall apart. You're going to fall apart. You can only do all that for so long. You can only do all that for so long. We don't want to judge. You know what I'm saying? What I do is I help. I got people that come out with us all day long, 120, 130, 140 pounds overweight. If you start eating better, you will lose 8 to 12 pounds a month. You will feel better. You will sleep better at nighttime. Your overall mindset, you think better. And again, you're now positive. A positive mind brings what? Positive energy. Positive energy, positive attitude. So it all works, it's the truth. It all works hand in hand. All right? Um, that's pretty much it, man. So again, I'm not the type of guy that, that preaches and tells people to do things, and I don't give them a um give them the plan. So I'm gonna leave y'all with some gym memberships for yeah. a month. Yeah. Not only are you guys getting gym memberships for a month, we give you guys a month of personal training. Oh, yes. Because yes. a gym membership yes. A gym membership is only worth the piece of paper that it's on. But now you woke up in the gym lost, and I'm in my office chilling, and I'm watching you do some crazy <laughs> shit across the gym that's probably going to hurt you more than anything else. <laughs> I'd rather have myself and one of my trainers show you guys the right way. Because like I said, guys, I started boxing when I was 11 years old. And that's what put me in the position that I'm in now. Boxing is what gave me the mindset that I started to achieve things that I didn't know I could achieve. I started taking care of myself. I started getting physical. I, I had my head endurance. I had stamina. I had confidence. I, was, I, I used it in the wrong way at first. I could fight now. So I'm walking through the Bronx. I wish somebody would. <laughs> I wish somebody would. And I ran around like that for a while. Until I realized, oh shit, Jay, this is, it ain't about hands no more. You can box all day. This kid's gonna shoot you from across the street. Just about so I had to humble myself. <laughs> what happened, baby? It's just about to protect yourself. It's about right. to, once you learn, now you got aura comp, you got your little lady next to you. You know you and your girl are good. You see what I'm saying? Or vice versa. You can be a female. You know your hand game is right. You and your man are good. You might have to protect him. Right. right. <laughs> I've seen it. But at the end of the day, you have an aura of confidence. Not even with just the, the hands or fighting. Just your overall just knowing that you're in the best physical shape you possibly can be in. And you don't even have to brag about it. You don't have to brag about it. If the guys that the guys that know how to fight, the guys that they are don't in shape, talk about they it. don't get into fights. But guys that it's the kids that and then the fight kick over your shoulders. Can nobody fight? Like, can nobody fight? Yeah, and yeah, the ones that talk about it, you know why they bark? Because they don't want to get into a fight. Yeah. They're trying to scare the other guy. Yeah. And then you're like, whoa, that was a fight right there. Like, what in the hell was that? Now they get beat up every day. We all know you fight. End of the day, guys. Start with your temple. All right. I'm gonna give you guys gym memberships. I want you guys coming to my gym. We're gonna evaluate you guys, figure out what your goals are, what you're looking to accomplish. Some guys want to be cock diesel. Some people don't want to be cock diesel. Some want to be athletically lean. Some people want to be the biggest dude on the block. Some girls say, "Listen, man, I want my waist going, I want my butt bigger." Whatever your goals are, <laughs> I do this all day long. Trust me. Whatever your goals are, we figure out what your goals are. I don't just tell you. I teach you how to do it. You guys will then learn meal planning. You guys will learn how many days a week it takes to train. You guys will learn how to train yourselves. And you have my word as a man, okay? If I leave here today and you guys start taking your bodies and your temples before everything else, you start cutting negativity out of your life, you start looking the part, and you start thinking the part, you start thinking not just for today, but two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, and you got a plan B, C, D, E, and F in case those other plans fall apart, you are guaranteed. <laughs> On top of all of that, you make sure you have a good heart. You don't just do this all to say, I want to get rich one day. You actually, you honestly have a good heart. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some people got to teach themselves that because they've been around so much negativity. They're just bitter. They're mad. They're pissed off. You see what I'm saying? You can teach yourself. I was that guy. I'm just mad. Like, I, I had to see a dude pull up in a Ferrari. I'm, I'm just hating on him. Fuck him. I'm, I'm, catching something. Until I got to a point, I see a dude with a Ferrari. I'm like, I see you, my brother. 
Then guess what? You got to, you can train yourself. Take all the negativity out of your heart. Take all the negative, negative people out of your lives. And just expect good to everyone else. You got my word. Good is going to come to you, guys. Fair enough? Yeah. Let's get it. Before you hand those out, oh. I should probably take them because they'll lose them. All right, say no more. Say no more. Say no more. And they will be like, oh, yes. I want to go to the gym, but I don't want to have to take them. Yes. 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 Before you have to take them. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, very important, very important. Here we did a lot of talking. Any any questions? Yeah, no. Cause you yeah. might have your own personal questions. Yeah. Go ahead. You gotta work tomorrow? I work every day. <laughs> Wait, not tomorrow Saturday? Yep. No. I work I'm off Saturday. Well I do work Saturday, but I'm not in the gym on Saturday. I work for me. Oh, you thanks for asking me that question. Nothing in life comes without work. And I ain't talking about no eight hour job. When you become an entrepreneur and when you want to take things to another level, you're never clocked out. The faster you're, you're here, the quicker working. you go. Fourteen hours a day. That's right. So but I'm there Monday through Friday. 10.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. sometimes 11 o'clock at night. I'm there all day long. That's one of my jobs. But I got, like you see your shirt, I got my entertainment company. We got a clothing line. We got all kinds of stuff going on. We just keep going. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need some. <laughs> Go ahead, DJ. Uh, my question is, because um, I'm moving to Morristown, so I wanted to see what location is closer to me. Morristown? Yeah. How far is Morristown? No, it's like from here, it's two hours. So we do, they probably all be even, evenly as close. Two hours is going to be two hours. Sure. Mm -hmm. Two hours, give me two hours. But I mean, I'm gonna make it with no no expiration. So if you come down for the summer, all right, you gonna take advantage of it because this this you guys have no idea how valuable this is right here. This right here will change your mindset, will change you physically, will change everything about you. You take care of your temple. I used to be in training because I used to want to be in Cirque du Soleil, so I would like have classes every day, and I can still do some like flexible stuff. You would, like so you're doing dancing and the whole nine, yeah. and gymnastics, yeah, and like all my right. life. So like I would have a certain diet and everything. Like my parents would make sure, and like I was confident stuff. and stuff, and, and I was around good. people like that. But then when I stopped. Like, I stopped, like, sleeping and stuff. And you feel like crap. Because what happened yeah. was you went to the top of your game. I'd rather, listen, there's no feeling worse than going to the top of your game and coming back down. Like, I was in the studio every day. Because you realized how, what your potential could have been. Yeah. But while you were doing that, you were around other people that were just like you. So you felt great. Everything was good. You felt confident. You felt strong. You slept well. Mm -hmm. Right? So are we going to get back mm -hmm. to that? There's no questions. Because you know you've been there. What's up, dude? Like, I was killing it. Oh, what's Royal Flush? Royal Flush is an entertainment company. Um, so basically what it is, it was a clothing line, um, first and foremost. But we also manage we also manage artists, um, recording artists. I myself am, am a recording artist. I go by the stage name Jay Royal. I'm actually blowing up. I'm going to be in Double XL magazine next month. Do you represent? I do a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, and again, guys, I, just, I started doing this because I was like, what else is there to do? I, I've come to a point in my life where I realized if you plan everything out the correct way, you can do whatever. You can be whoever the hell you want to be. So right now, we're just having fun. Hell yeah. we can, we're just having fun with it. And I use this as my way to show everybody else, look, if I'm doing it, I'm the same person like you. I breathe the same air. I'm standing in the same room wearing the same clothes. If I can do it, there's no reason nobody else can like do it. Same though, yeah. before you to chase your dreams like that, you gotta make sure you have your foundation first. Yeah. Mind you, you gotta have your foundation first. I, if I had I been chasing this rap music career from when I was 15 years old, do you think I'd be in the position that I'm in now? Mm -hmm. Not at all. I'd have been this aspiring rapper from New York that be out there selling drugs to pay for my studio time. No, I established myself doing something that would guarantee me an income, would guarantee my daughters are paid for, would guarantee I have an automobile, would guarantee I have a house over a roof over my head, will guarantee I have a savings account. Now I'm at a point like, oh shit, all that is set up. That ain't going nowhere. What more can I do? I know, let's, let's start a clothing line. Like, let's, we woke up, let's, let's sell shirts. And guess what? Because there's a plan B, C, D, and E, guess what happens with the shirts? Is it successful or not? Yeah. Successful. Because I got a plan B, C, D, and E, I make a music video, start making music. You think that's going to blow? Yes, because I'm not thirsty. If I was dependent on just that, them shirts wasn't going to sell. If I was dependent on just that, I wouldn't have been in Miami on Monday doing a show for 600 females. I'd have had one girl throwing a bottle at me. Like, get the hell out of here. It's because I'm not, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. So I can comfortably do things. What's up, man? So, like, I make beats, so... That's what, that, that, that's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. First thing you're gonna do is get in the gym. <laughs> 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 I thought that was a good thing. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, what? What's that? What's that? Why Jim or the beats? Why no, that's a, that, it ain't a good, that's a great thing. That's not because I'm in that world. Nigga, I watch this happen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so it's all this happen, right? Negative. 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 What's that? So, all the negative. Um, for me, I wanted to ask because, like, um, I know everybody starts their business. Here's some I have my own business. I have two sponsors. But I have yet to do, like, because I've been busy with What's your business? Uh, basically, it's going to be a theater for um, you. I'm um, basically uh, helping, providing you um, with a, a foundation, mm -hmm. a way to get away from everything. Okay. Basically, um, it's uh, like more sound music. Or nah, I don't know specifically where I'm going to put it yet. Right. I'm going to put it where I know where it's needed most. Right. I'm not going to put it somewhere like New York or Philly because they already have a lot of stuff there. Right. So I'm going to put it somewhere where they need it. Right. Know? So, um, so almost a theater where they can they can practice dancing, yeah, dancing, Broadway, just you know being theatrics. productive and yes. positive. Not not just it's all about fun though. It's also me teaching them ways of life and how to go about things. And, so know, that's the first. So, so, that's, so that's that's a good game plan. How what what is how is, what's your goal to make money? How do you plan to make money from the theater? Is I mean, it going to be like a government funded thing? Are you looking for contributions? Are you looking to charge the people? I mean, more so, it? more or less, it was going to be like I know for me it's going to be nonprofit. I'm not expecting to gain something from it. Right. But I know for me, like how I was going to make my money from my business is basically because um, I was going to have like there's going to be a theater, so schools want to do prom, so there's going to be a ball, right. a ballroom. Then there's going to be like maybe people want to come in. And do like you know, show one of their shows. Like there's sh uh, mobile shows that go all over the world, so they can come to my place, my spot. Here, here's here. my first piece of advice: you go into nonprofit businesses, right? When you have something else that you're doing yeah. that makes you money, right? I I I can come here today, mm -hmm. nonprofit. I don't make nothing. I'm actually gonna give stuff, okay? Right. But if this, if I was just doing this, I'll be leaving here and hailing a cab or getting yeah. on the bus. I I'm able to do this because I set up businesses where I'm good. Mm -hmm. Where I can now take my time and show others how to be good. So I love the idea, and it's it's not a, it's not an idea. Right. That's gonna be a reality. If right. you want it, it's there. Exactly. It's gonna be there. But first thing you always want to make sure is two things. Anyone who's involved in your business with you, mm -hmm. before you figure out how much money you make, you're gonna figure out how much money they make. Uh -huh. Because there's nothing better than a team of people around you that have a reason to be there. Once people feel like they're being shortchanged or they feel they're working more than what they're being compensated, they're no longer gonna be loyal to you. Make sure your team is on point. Now, you can't make sure your team is too good and now you're hurt. Right. So as long as you can figure out a way to make sure your team around you, everyone who plays a part in this business, makes a decent enough income, and you also make it, you got to be rich off of it. Right. I, I never planned to get rich. I used to do that when I was younger. I used to try to.